Shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Today's episode is called My Ancestors Mad. That's right. Today's episode is called My Ancestors Mad. <laughs> we gonna get into it. We gonna get into it. We gonna get into it, y'all. Today's episode is called My Ancestors Mad. That's right. That's right. We're going to get into a discussion. Hope y'all doing all right. Hope y'all doing all right. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Let's talk about some history, y'all. Let's talk about some history. Y'all, can anybody lead you to heaven that did this to your ancestors? Yes or no? Shalom to you, Elizabeth. Hope you're doing well. Can anybody lead you to heaven if they did this to your ancestors? Hello. Hello. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. Follow us on TikTok, on iHeartRadio, follow us on Spotify, follow us on YouTube, the Forefront Radio 2.0. If you want to contribute to our cash app, the cash app is there, dollar sign A-P-H-I-E-L-L-E-V-I. Even if it's a dollar, your contributions help us to teach the truth here in Africa. Y'all, let's talk about it. My ancestors are mad. My ancestors are mad. What they mad about forefront? Let's find out. Let's find out. What what are our ancestors mad about? Do they got a reason to be pissed off? Do they got a reason to be agitated? Do they got a reason? Cause cause guess what? No nobody was voting for this. When they tell you go go vote 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 vote, did our ancestors vote for this? Y'all, do you see what we're looking at here? What you see on the screen is yokes of iron that they've placed over the face of an endangered person named an endangered species known as the Israelite, known as the Negro, known as Hispanic, endangered species. You understand? Our ancestors are mad because here it is. We had yokes of iron upon our neck. Our culture, our understanding of who we are. And then we, we think that the European image that they gave us in church is going to lead us closer to God. Nope, 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 nope. Shalom, Mark. Welcome, 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 welcome. Shalom, Mark. Exactly what you said happened too, huh? Mm-hmm. So guess what? This happened as early as the 1490s when Christopher Columbus came over here with Dominican uh, 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 priests, with Catholic priests, right? With Catholic priests and told us, Jesus loved the little children of the world. Red or yellow, black and white, they are precious in the sight. That's what they brought. Military on one side, missionary on the other. Conquistadores on one side and clerical, somebody said source. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you already see the scoffers? Do you already see the scoffers here? Folks on Demon Time just woke up in the morning. Me no black, me no medicate. I love it. I love it. You're right. You're right. We we covered that the other day, right? We were talking about our brothers that was um, uh, brainwashed, right? They thought, they thought this never happened to them. Christopher Columbus brought this. Somebody said your source. Why don't you check the records of Christopher Columbus? Here's a source right here. The book is entitled The Destruction of the Indies by Bartolomeu de las Casas. Look it up, look it up, look it up. In the age of information, ignorance is a choice. So Northern Kingdom Israelites were placed in the captivity and they were called Indios, Indian. They were called Hispanic and they had yokes of iron upon their neck just like Negroes. Let's read it in the Bible. Let's read it in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's read verse, watch this, 48. And it reads, Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. Shalom to you, Melissa. I hope you're doing well. And he, and he, referring to who? Christopher Columbus, Hernan Cortez, Ponce de Leon, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. And he 
shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Did this happen to black people? Yes or no? Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat if you're confused. Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a one. In, put a two in the chat if you lost to the source. Put a one in the chat for yes. Put a two in the chat if you don't give a damn. <laughs> now, uh, he I said the source like this just never happened. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Bring it out. Bring it out. We got ones. We got ones. We got ones. We got ones. Wait a minute. So-called Hispanics, you went through the same thing that so-called black people went through. Why you say, I'm not black, I'm Dominican. Yo soy Dominicana. You trying to salsa your way out of oppression. <laughs> you trying to bachata your way out of oppression. You trying to rice and bean your way out of oppression. You black just like us. Stop it. Yo soy Dominicano. Yo soy Puerto Ricano. I'm I'm a Mexican. No, you're not. No, you're not. I saw I saw a TikTok live with a dude named uh, Ricardo Ignacio or something like that. And I went on this live and said, introduced myself and you know brought out some statistical data and historical facts. I said to him, I said, look, when you examine Hispaniola, Hispaniola was called that title because. Christopher Columbus and the cohorts from Spain renamed that island Hispaniola. So the first people that was called Hispanic was black and brown people off that island, Haiti and Dominican Republic. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, prior to the 1400s, nobody was called a Hispanic. Nobody was called a Latino. There we go. Somebody put, who cares? <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you. Thank, thank you, Paul Toast, for saying, who cares? Now watch this. Watch this. Blaconda forever. <laughs> Y'all, you see why I said, you see why I said uh that I don't got no time for no score for Zach? You see, you see that, right? Con. You see that? What they do? They 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 mock? All right, bye. Bye. That's it. That's it. So we're going over history. We're going over prophecy. And then they say, who cares? I'm glad you say who cares. Because guess what? They think that there's no judgment for this. When they say who cares, they think that there's no penalty. Listen, when it comes to the creator of all things, there's no statute of limitations on war crimes. There's no statute of limitations on human rights violations. Go ahead, Ak. You want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, I want to bring that. Well, add to your point what you're saying. There's no statute of limitations on that, right? Because we got to read something in the law that actually speaks about that. There let's we go. go. Bring it out. Let's go to um. Let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter thirty-five, and I'm gonna read verses thirty-three and thirty-four. And it reads, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defiles the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Mm, read that again for the kids in the back. Read it again. Con. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for the blood it defiles the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Mm, 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 mm. Did Spain, when they came to America, when they came to when they came to Mexico, when they came to Brazil, when they came to Ecuador, did they shed innocent blood on the land? Yes or no? Write it in the chat. Write it in the chat. Let's get let's get a poll real quick. Let's get a poll. Let's get a poll. Smiley face for yes. Right? Smiley face for yes, sad face for no. Smile, let's get it, let's get it. Tap, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, tap. Um, the question is, come on, y'all got y'all got like one minute to answer it. Put, put Y'all tap the screen and hit the smiley face. Give me smiley emojis. Did they do that? We got red man to say yes, of course. There we go, there we go. Now we got smiley faces. We got two smiley faces out of what? Like 70 plus people that was in the room? Right. 
So, oh, there we go. We got another one. Okay, same thing. Same. Next question. When America, uh-oh. When British, uh-oh. When France, uh-oh. When Spain, uh-oh. When Portugal, uh-oh. When the Dutch came to the quote-unquote new world. Were there people already here? Did they unalive the people that was already here? What happened to those people? What you see on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, is what happened to those people. Now, here's the proof that there's no statutes of limitations. Just like what the brother had just read. We're going to read it now in the Ten Commandments. Watch this. Let's read Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to start at verse 5. We're going to paraphrase the verse. It says, I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Wait a minute. So if God say thou shalt not unalive people, right, 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 right. But you got a group of folks that travel all the way across the planet, put them on slave ships, drag them across overseas, right? And said, dig for that gold, dig for that copper, dig for that silver. Oh, there's no more gold, there's no more silver. Off with your hand, off with your ears, off with your nose. Oh, you don't want to listen to me? Okay, okay, guess what? We're going to put you in chains. We're going to change this encomienda system. And now we're going to make you work. Sugarcane plantation, coffee plantation. In the, b Before so-called blacks in 1619, y'all. They was doing this since 1493. 1493. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. So don't nobody say I'm not quoting from the Bible. Let's read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. And it shall come, but it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Watch this. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. So, when you look at Hispanic people, when you look at Latino people, when you look at Native indigenous populations, when you look at Black people all over the planet, are we, are we suffering from generational curses? You see, when you go to the Christian church, they say, Oh, break every chain, break. Talking about generational curses, right? But they never tell you that the curse was slavery. They never tell you that in church. They never tell you that. So when it says curse shall thou be in the city, that means no matter what city you go to, whether Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, whether Veracruz in Mexico, whether New York City in the United States, whether Nova Scotia in Canada, Black and Hispanic and Native Indigenous populations are in the lowest conditions, in the ghettos, in the slums, in the barrios, till this day. Like, like that uh, prominent boxer, you know that prominent boxer would be like, to this day, to this day, come on, Radio Raheem, to this day. Ah, uh, yeah, wow. So we still suffering from generational curses and we're trying to uh, uh, elevate the mind, educate the person. This is for information and educational purposes to elevate our people as to how did we get into this state right here, right? <laughs> Browse Baba, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did we get into this state where we had chains of iron upon our neck? Then all of a sudden, Jokers is putting stuff to wire it into our eyes. Come on, man. And forcing your mouth to be open. Y'all, who knows what they was doing to our ancestors, man? Who knows what they were doing to mothers and granddaughters and sons? Who knows? Were they forcing food down their throat or were they forcing fecal matter? Were they putting food down their throat or something else egregious? Come on, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let's read it again. Curse shall thou be in the city and curse shall thou be in the field, in the field, in the field. From there, let's go to, let's go to the New Testament because, you know, you got some jokers that be like, that's in the Old Testament forefront. What about the New? The New Testament says the same thing. 
curse in the city, curse in the field. Let's find out. Let's go to the book of James, chapter 5. Don't play with us with this Bible. We will run circles around you with the truth. Either you get it or you don't. <laughs> hey, let's do it. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 5. Let's start at verse four. It says, behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, who have reaped down your fields, your fields. That's the jokers that was cursing the city and cursing the field. That's the jokers that was cursing the city and cursing the field. It says, behold, the hire of the laborers, a.k.a. the workers who have reaped down your fields, your sugar cane field coffee feel oregano y'all know when i say oregano i'm talking about the spliffer spliffer right the spliffer field tobacco field rice field right cotton feel behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields which is of you meaning the global elite the rich men of the earth right your corporations which is kept back of you by fraud by fraud by fraud meaning people were working for free in the field this is why the name of today's episode is your ancestors are mad <laughs> oh man so like yeah I, I do want to address this i know it's your platform but i definitely want to address that statement um no love for this world road, right? So what a question that I just want you to go, um, brother, no love for this world, right? Is if they wrote it, why would they write about their own destruction? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, study to show thyself approved first before you make a comment. Yes, exactly. Very good point. Guess what? When you read the Bible, the, the same people that did this to you, the Bible says they're going to be destroyed. We're reading it right now. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields. Who forced the black man in America to work in the field? I'll wait. Who forced so-called Hispanics to work in the field? I'll wait. Who, y'all, we got articles as, as, as early as 2023 where they caught, right, in Georgia and in Texas, so-called European folk, making Mexican and Venezuelan workers work for free on plantation systems in Georgia and in Texas. And the FBI raided them. It's still going on today. For these jokers that be like, oh, it was such a long time ago. Why are you trying to pull a race card? Why are you so mad about this? Why that? Why? Listen, if one person is in captivity, none of us are free. And if, let me say it again for the kids in the back. If one of us are in captivity, that means nobody is free. You think they're going to get away with that? You think there's no statute of limitations? Watch this. It says, behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cries and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Meaning what? The God of this Bible. The God of this Bible is mad because people were forced to work for free when he gives the land and all creation of humanity, right? He gave it to Adam. He said, Adam, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, have dominion. And here you got a particular section out of Adam that say, you know what? Mm, God chosen people, we don't like you. We going to relegate you to colors in the crayon box. We're going to call you brown. We're going to call you black. We're going to call you negros, indios. We don't like you very much. So we're going to take you and put you in chains, and we're going to make you work for hundreds of years while we build up our Gucci, while we build up our Fendi, while we build up our Prada, while we build up all the things that would... Y'all, do you know that cotton itself, the fashion industry itself is a billion-dollar industry? Just cotton alone. If they really wanted to give reparation, they'll say, give the whole entire cotton industry and the fashion industry to black and brown people. But will they do it? No. Let's use sugar, for example. Let's use sugar. Hundreds of plantations in Brazil, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Savannah, Georgia, all had sugar 
Cain feels. Now, think of all the things that are produced in your house right now. Go to your fridge right now, go to your cabinet, and tell me what you got that has sugar products in it. Your pop toast, right, right? Your, your, your iced tea, your lemonade, right? Got sugar in it, right, right, right? A little bit of bread has some sugar in it, right? So wait a minute. You can't have that coffee without a little bit of sugar unless you take it straight black, right? Your little kids, they say, mommy, daddy, take me to the store. I want some candy, right? Your Snickers bars, your Mars, your Twix, your Hershey's cookies and cream. Don't get me started on ice cream, right? Whole entire stores, Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, all dedicated to ice cream with sugar. I'm trying to make you think. I'm trying to make you think. Think about all these industries making billions of dollars since the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, 2024. I got to talk like this to make a point. Because they like, Forfer, why you so loud? Why you sound like you angry? Because our ancestors are mad. Now I'm going to show you why they're mad. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Why are your ancestors mad? Why are they angry? You got a comment? Right, go ahead if you, if you want to bring something out. Because uh, he was like, uh, they were saying <clears throat> that they act like they can escape from it. You know, how he was saying that the Europeans wrote this. But then it says in Isaiah 14 and 21, it says, prepare slaughter for the children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Mm. Does that sound like God has a reservation, an appointment? When I hear that verse, when he says prepare destruction, that's like, like let's put it like this. That's like you got a tax return, right? And you go to the tax attorney or the tax clerk and you say, hey, this is all the stuff that was racked up from years of saving and spending and all of this stuff, right? And you go to file your tax return and they prepared it for you. And then you got to wait. And then on that day, you get that payment, right? Mm. The wages of sin is what? Somebody done worked a job where they were doing evil on the earth. Mm. Wasted. That's a parable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Nah, Con, I was just saying the wages of sin is death. Mm hmm. Oh, you got to say unalive on TikTok. TikTok be real uh, uh, cautious about what you say. So you got to say unalive uh, slash deleted, stuff like that. Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 7, verse 7. It says, surely oppression, surely oppression makes a wise man mad, mad, mad. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad and a gift destroys the heart. So now these two scriptures are telling us that oppression will make anyone that has good sense upset. Okay. When you see somebody being mistreated, it should, in your humanity, make you upset. It should make you say, we need to do something about this. We need to stop this. We need to make create change. But guess what? Nobody paid back the ancestors that let me help. Let me help you all kind of put a timeline of how this device that you're looking on the screen came from Europe and transition itself from Europe to Africa to the New World. Let me give you a timeline. You had something called the Spanish Inquisition. During the Spanish Inquisition, many Black Portuguese Hebrews that lived in the Iberian Peninsula, this is Spain and Portugal, were kicked out. In subsequent years, many of them were kicked out of different places in Europe, such as France, such as England, such as Scotland. These were all areas where black and brown people resided. They call them the, Mo the Moors, the Moriscos, and the Afro-Hebraic people, okay, aka Jews, right? The Catholic Church passed a law 
a papal bull, where they authorize the captivity or forced conversion of all of these people groups. They renamed them and retitled them to Negro, Moriscos, Morenos, Negros, all Spanish terms. In 1492, when Christopher Columbus sailed across the ocean blue, he brought with him Hebrew speaking translators to speak to the indigenous populations. Yes, Hispanic, your original language was not Spanish. So during this inquisition, they accused black and brown people of being Judaizers for something as benign as wearing a clean shirt on the Sabbath day. That's right, folks. If you were teaching the Bible and said, we need to do what the Bible says, we need to keep the commandments of God, we need to love your neighbor as ourselves, guess what? The Catholic Church found it dangerous to the Hebraic, dangerous to their religion for you to teach that Christ was a black man and that we got to keep God's laws like the Day of Atonement, which some of y'all already miss, like the Feast of Tabernacles. Certain festivals that the Bible said to do, they said, no, don't do what the Bible says. Follow the pagan Christian customs. Follow uh, Satan claws and rabbits laying eggs. And they unalived people for this. So this device that you see right here, folks, started with the Inquisition. Then when they decided to kick out all these Afro-Hebraic people groups out of Spain and Portugal and send them down into Mauritania, Algeria, right? And further on into the West Coast of Africa, right? They said, we're going to just flat out call you all Africans. We're just going to call all of y'all a blanket term. We're going to call y'all Africans and you jokers over there on the other side. We're just going to call you a blanket term. We're going to call you Indians. And the same device that they utilized during that time period, now they use utilize it during captivity. They utilize it during captivity. They utilized it during slavery. Watch this. Let's read it again. It says, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad and a gift destroys the heart. So, subsequently, we fast forward a little bit in future where you reach the 1400s, the 1500s, the 1600s, and you get the beginning of slave revolts against this systematic mistreatment. The yokes of iron, the shackles, the whippings, the mistreatment, the physical endurance that they had to break through. Listen, I, I, remember, I remember back when uh, uh, Kanye West was talking about slavery was a choice. <laughs> no, the hell it wasn't. So what happened? You got Toussaint Louverture fighting against oppression. You got uh, uh, you got uh, Mr. Boulevard, right? I can't remember his full name. Starts with an S. It was a Samuel Boulevard. I can't remember his name, right? They got a whole country Boulevard. called Bolivia. What's his name? I think it was Samuel Boulevard. Yes, Boulevard, Boulevard, right? Right. right. You got all of these freedom fighters. In Puerto Rico, in Dominican Republic, in Haiti, you got Nat Turner in America. Denmark you got the VC. city. Of, yes, Denmark VC. You got the city of Chicago that was founded by a Haitian man, so-called Haitian tribe. Believe I really don't, right? So these people were not just getting down and laying down; they were fighting oppression and fighting for freedom, right? And then what happened? The other nations started to abolish things because they were scared. They said, if we don't let these people go, they're going to unalive all of us. That's what they said. Some of them still wanted to keep them. Some of the wars had to be fight to end this type of intolerable behavior. Which mimics what we read in the book of Maccabees. Watch this, watch this. Let's read the book of Maccabees real quick. Just, just, just a few precepts. Let's read uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 41. Watch this, and we're going to jump right back. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 41, it says, And the merchants of the country, hearing the fame of them, took silver and gold very much, 
with servants and came into the camp to buy the children of Israel, the children of Israel for slaves. Wait a minute. Take that out the Bible. Don't let them read that. Don't tell us that the same people that were working as slaves in Egypt are the same people working as slaves in the Americas, in Africa, all across the world. Don't tell us that. Rip that out the Bible. Make it apocrypha. Make it hidden. That's what they did, y'all. That's what they did. That's what they did. But our ancestors fought back and resisted. Let's go back. Let's go back a chapter. Let's go to 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. Were they taking it like a man or were they fighting for their freedom? Because see, when, when black and brown people fight, they say, you're doing a rebellion, right? Jacob's rebellion, Nat Turner's rebellion, Haitian rebellion. That's what they call it, right? Hispanic, Mexican rebellion. But when, when, but when TYT folks fight, they, they, they're fighting for freedom, right? <laughs> make it make sense. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter two, verse 64. Wherefore ye, my sons, be valiant, be valiant, be valiant, and show yourselves men in behalf of the law, in behalf of the law, for by it shall you obtain glory. Mm -mm. Boy, that was my ancestor right there, tribe of Levi right there, right there. That's my daddy right there. They, they don't take it lying down. They say, hey, we're going to fight. You understand? And and no, we we don't support Nasty Yahoo that's over there calling himself a, a Jewish man. That dude come from Eastern Europe. None of them jokers over there is the real people of the Bible. Because the Bible says that the children of Israel would go into slavery on ships in all nations, lose their identity, lose their culture, be called different tongues like black, Hispanic, native indigenous, aboriginal. When you say aboriginal, you know what I mean? That means ab is without, original means origin, without origin. You see that? You see that? They called your ancestors without origin guess what you're the lord's tribes of israel you're the real people of the bible blacks hispanics and native americans you're the real people of the bible you are god's chosen so this is why we're reading out of the bible to prove to you your own history with and we back it up with science and we back it up with archaeological evidence and we back it up with news articles and we back it up with history and facts you understand right right German, Yiddish, all of that stuff, right? Revelation 2, 9. Wish they was you with the letter J, but are not. Watch this. Let's go back. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression makes a wise man mad and a gift destroys the heart. So what happened? We were fighting against oppression. We were fighting against mistreatment. And then a gift came and destroyed the mind. What was the gift? Let's make some concessions. Let's let them enter into our schools. Let's integrate them. Let's 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 say we're all free in one nation. Let's have a multicultural society. While while we're on the bottom and everybody else on top, while we're the tail and everybody else is the head. So what happened? Briberies took place. Briberies took place. Briberies manipulation took place. Concessions were made. Concessions were made. Uh, 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 can you look it for me? Can, can you look this up for me? It's in Sirach, but I can't remember if it's chapter 40, where it says all bribery, something about bribery. Look up bribery for me on, in Sirach. Let me know what that precept is. Uh, I want to, uh... All right, so what happened? The Bible says a gift destroys the heart. Our people stopped fighting. I got it. Uh, the civil, you got it. Bring it out. Uh, this is a book of Chirac, chapter 40. And I'm start at verse 12. It says all bribery and injustice shall be blotted out, but true dealing shall endure forever. There we go. There we go. What happened to our ancestors where they stopped fighting for freedom is that they gave up and made concessions by gifts, by bribery. But your ancestors rolling around in the grave saying, I ain't fight all this time and lose my life energy 
my sangre and my tears and my sweat for you to say, let me go out and vote. Come on, man. Stop being simple out here. Left wing, right wing. It's like you got to pick left devil or right devil. What the hell? <laughs> They did not fight against oppression for you to integrate yourself and assimilate yourself in the new world order. For you to say, I got a Bentley now. Oh, I, my booty hole brown. Like, what, what's that? Sexy brown. What the hell that girl name? Little girl. Sexy brown or whatever her name is. Sexy red. Right? For you to sing your booty hole brown. Your ancestors did not fight oppression for now for you to equate your colonization to now LGBTQ, RSTU, VW, XYZ. For some strange reason now, black and brown and Latino oppression is equated to peanut butter and jelly bandits. How the hell when they put this type of chain around your head and drilled holes into your eyes if you decided to become a runaway slave and fight for freedom, you got bribed. You was given a gift, right? Give them Section 8. Give them food stamps. We've been, we've been yelling for 40 acres and a mule, and they say, no, give them jobs, right? But guess what? The Most High has not, has not forgotten you. The Most High has not forgotten your tears. The Most High, the most high has not forgotten your suffering. Watch this. And this is why you need a savior. Now we're going to get to the crux of the matter. This is why you need a savior. Let's go to it. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. The book of Isaiah, chapter 61. This is why you need a savior, y'all. Watch this. We're going to show you the truth of the gospel. Not what you learn in your Christian church. Not what you learn on Sunday school. But what the Bible actually says about your black and brown history. Watch this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach, to preach good tidings, good tidings unto the meek, unto the meek. Who is going around saying the meek shall inherit the earth in the New Testament? Mm, I wonder, I wonder. Who was he talking about? He hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Was Sonia Massey's relatives brokenhearted when a person with known ties, a police officer with known ties, having tattoos and regalia dedicated to Eurocentric delusional groups that have always had an agenda since, since early, early, early times during the time of the Romans to unalive our ancestors, right? Were they brokenhearted? Was the parents of Trayvon Martin, were they brokenhearted? Were the parents of Philando Castile, were they brokenhearted? Were the parents of Fernando Fuentes, when they unalived him, were they broken? Because this is happening to black and brown people, y'all. Hispanics getting the business from the cops. Black people getting the business from the cops, but for some strange reason, we think we ain't the same people. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 33 says, both Israel and Judah are oppressed together. Black and brown people are oppressed together. When you get pulled over, they're not going to stop and say, you, uh, excuse me, sir, are you Cuban? They, they're going to say, you black. Excuse me, sir, are you Venezuelan? They're going to say, you black. You understand? You understand? So this is why we need a savior to deliver us from all of this oppression, mistreatment. This is why your ancestors are mad. Watch this. It says to preach good tidings unto the meat. That's good news for those that were forced to become humble, humble through slavery, humble through mass incarceration, humble through last hired, first fired, humble through colonization, humble through having yokes of iron metal engraved into your face. Somebody say, YTR oppressed just as much or more. When did TYT folks have a chain of iron around their face 
where someone drilled holes into their eye sockets. Lee Putnam, that made the comment, why you see people are oppressed just as much or more. Did that happen to your ancestors? Come on up, come on up. Please break down the history for me. Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not a scholar. Maybe, maybe I'm simple. Maybe I don't know nothing. You understand? Because this device was used on during the slave trade. This device also was used during the Inquisition. So the same people that were persecuted during the Inquisition was the same people that they forcefully converted to Catholicism. Hmm. Do you think those that would do this to your ancestors could ever show you the way to heaven? Never. Nope. Nada. Now we're going to give you the true gospel according to the Bible. Let's read it again. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach, to preach, to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Stop, 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 stop. The Bible says... God says that he sent Jesus the Christ, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, Yeshua, Isa, Yeshai, whatever title you want to use, to give freedom to the slaves, liberty to the captives. Liberty means freedom, forefront. And captives is another word for slaves. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Not everybody was a slave. Hey, hey, that means Jesus coming for you. That means Jesus coming for me. That means Jesus coming for those that were oppressed. All praises to the both side. All praises to the both side. All praises to the both side. This is why we need a savior. Somebody got to come here and give Esau the business. Somebody got to come over here and give Ishmael the business. Somebody got to come over here. Please, Father, swing low, sweet chariot. Why were your answers singing swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home? What were they singing about? Angels coming down from heaven, huge black angels that could stand in the sun, like you read in Revelation. Hey, like you read in the Revelation, coming down to carry me home. Mm. Uh, can I bring up what um, Zacharias, John the Baptist's dad, thought about it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right, so this is in the gospel. This is the book of Luke, chapter one, and I'm gonna start at verse 67. And it reads, And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. 69. And he hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. 70. And he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, so nobody had any other doctrine. 71, that we would be saved from our enemies, from the hand that all that hate us. Mm, excellent precept. Who is the most hated, mistreated people on the planet? And don't tell me to focus, the, the, them focus from uh, 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 World War II, because it ain't them. <laughs> when you see 12 years a slave, right? You figure out if that if the people that went through 12 years of slaves was hated. When you watch the movie Apocalypto and Christopher Columbus comes and unlocks a whole bunch of indigenous populations, y'all, let me tell you something. They use the excuse of smallpox and chickenpox and blankets to tell you that's the reason why they had a whole bunch of people that was unalive in America. The native indigenous population, half of the population was wiped out by smallpox. No, the hell it wasn't. Guess what? It was people that was coming around showing them that they did not have their best interests at heart. Would your friend dismember your fingers, your, your ears, your nose, just so you could dig gold? Was that an act of friendship? Was that love and caring? Because where's all this BS that they say, right? God loves everybody. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, right? Freedom and democracy, freedom and justice for all, right? Right? Liberty and brotherhood, like they say in France, right? Where was all that in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s? This is why we need a savior. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, like his wallet, his shoes, his wife, his kids, right? They were lying to us. 
They never told you that Jesus Christ was a black man from the tribe of Judah. They never told you that the Levites were the priests and they were taken on slave ships from the kingdom of Judah. They never tell you that off the west coast of Africa, the homie, the homie, modern day Benin, had a kingdom called the kingdom of Judah. They never told you that. They never told you that. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. It says, he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Who's suffering from mass incarceration? It seems to me, Hispanic people, black people, native indigenous populations, if we're the so-called minority, why are we the majority in jail? What's going on? If we're the so-called minority, why is 90% of the jails in America filled with black and brown people? I thought we was the minority. Wouldn't there be like 1%, 2%? What's going on here? Who's suffering from mass incarceration? We're reading out of the Bible, black history, and the person said, damn right. But why still be Christian? We the Israelites. We yeah, believe in the Messiah, Christian. the black Messiah. That's the difference. My bad. Not Go ahead, Christian, I no, nah, Salakia, my bad. I cut you off, Akim. But no, uh, to Nick, we're not Christian, huh? We are the original Hebrews. Ask, ask the Spanish people in, in Puerto Rico, the Borican. They were called Hibaros. J I B A R O. Hibaros. Hebrew. Hibaros. Hebrew. Hebrew. That sound, that sound the same to me. Hmm. Ask the so called Haitians. Right? So called because they're not really Haitian. Ask them, what is the Haitian Creole term for heaven? They're going to tell you, brother, the word is called Shemin. Shemin. Then ask them, hey, um, what is the Hebrew word for uh, heaven? They're going to say Shemayin. Wait a minute. So Haitians say Shemin for heaven, sky, firmament. And out of the Bible, when it says that God created the heavens, it's Shema, Shema, Shemaim, Shema, the same Haitian word. What's going on here? He was going to bring so something like, out. Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Um, Nick responded back. He said, he said, my bad, still Abrahamic religions that were invented to control all of us. See, that's so right. this is what I'm saying to my people where we still have to study, right? Um, uh, I know you know where it's at, but I think I'm going to pull it for him, right? Because this is dealing with Genesis, one of the first books. This is called the Yara Torah, right? So in the book of Genesis, it tells you what Abraham believed. Just because his children went off and did something different, as Deuteronomy quotes, that we would do. If you go to Genesis chapter 26 and read verse 5, mm -hmm. it states, Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws, the same ones that the Hebrews got brought to uh, with Moses from Mount Sinai. Facts. So our religion was not Baptist, Pentecostal, Seventh Day Adventist, Judaism, Talmudism, Islam. No. When Moses was walking on Mount Sinai, he gave them laws, statutes, and commandments. That's your religion. That's your religion. Your pure religion is to help the fatherless, to feed the hungry, to love your people like you love yourself. If I love you, I'm not going to take what belongs to you, brother. That's thou shalt not steal. If I love you, you see, the commandments is love. If I love you, I'm not going to take your woman from you. That's thou shalt not commit adultery. If I love you, I'm not going to rip the clothes off your back. That's thou shalt not covet. It's real easy. It's real easy. We walk in love around here. We love you, baby. We love you. Straight scriptural. John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is love that we keep God's commandments and his commandments are not hard. It's not hard. It's like, yeah, I got another point, man. These conferences is crazy this morning. Um, Demon time. You see that, right? <laughs> yeah, but 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 look, you see, the, that's why I said you can't do this with study brothers, bro. 
um, when they said, he said he gave salvation to the Gentiles, right? That's what he said. I'm about to Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who uh, said there's that? a guy up here. His name is Kenneth. Kenneth, Kenneth? 3, 3113. But, um, Kenneth 3. Now, does this sound like salvation to the Gentiles? I'm going to go to Acts 5, right? This is Peter, the rock of the church who Christ left in charge. So according to him, he learned directly from Christ and Christ left him in charge of the church, right? So this is his understanding of the salvation, right? This is Acts chapter five. I'm gonna start at verse 29 because he was there with the other apostles. He says, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So I can't just go off of what you're saying, Kenneth. I gotta go off every word of the mouth of the most high, right? Verse 30, and it reads, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hang on a tree. Verse 31, and it reads, him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. So where do we read salvation for the Gentiles there? Excellent point. Excellent point. You see, the, the difference between those that study the Bible and those that have regurgitated what they learn in church, it's like, I'll give you a perfect example. It's like going to a college professor that has been teaching calculus and you being exposed to church is like basic mathematics, right? from kindergarten to fifth grade level. So while we're doing equations, while we're doing statistical data, while we're going scripture for scripture, verse for verse, right? Instead, they say, two plus two is 22, teacher. Y'all look crazy out here. Y'all look crazy, y'all look bugged the hell out when you say, that the same people that put that crazy mask that I just had up, that God gonna save them. When we're reading out of the Bible that Christ came to set the captive free. So wait a minute, wait a minute. You're gonna save the righteous, the innocent, and you're gonna save the wicked? Make it make sense. You're gonna save the oppressed and the oppressor? Make it make sense. It does not, you wait a minute, hold on. So Jesus, the God of all creation, right? The most high that sent his son, that sent his son, that scattered his people amongst the, the Gentiles, right? He's gonna skip over his people and he gonna hand pick a whole bunch of people that's into Buddha, into Islam, into uh, worshiping a white man as a deity, all of this, right? And he's gonna skip over his people that went through hundreds of thousands of years of colonization. And in so wait a minute, you're telling me that the God of creation is gonna save both the colonizer and the colonized? Hmm. That doesn't sound very godly to me. That doesn't sound very righteous to me. That sounds like Christianity. Christianity is not in the Bible. The word Christian, the term Christian is in the Bible. The term Christ is in the Bible, but Catholic ain't there. Protestant ain't there. You wish ain't, well, actually no, that term is in there in the book of Esther, I think. Uh, well, Ashkenazim ain't there. Let me put it like that. Yiddish ain't there. Islam ain't there. You understand? When you read the Bible, you will learn the truth and the truth will make you free. So what, what we just read shows you why our ancestors are mad. If you're ever confused on whether this Bible is about religion versus your ancestors, let's go to Leviticus chapter 26. This will clear out all doubt. Watch this. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 26, because some people say, God forgot in his people. He cares more about the Gentiles than everybody else on the planet. Let's find out. Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Let's read verse 45. And it reads, but I will for their sakes, remember, remember, remember the covenant of their ancestors, of their ancestors. Wait a minute. I thought it was about the Baptist church. Of their 
ancestors. Wait a minute. I thought it was about all nations of their ancestors. Wait a minute. I thought it was about Catholic of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen that I might be their God, their God. I am Yahweh. Wait a minute. Go ahead. Up. Con. Um, hey, bro, your audience. Okay. So look, Kenneth just put down, he said, I'm not Protestant or Catholic. I'm saved through the through grace and faith. He said he's saved through grace and faith. Can we get on the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 12? Bring it out. Con. The water up. And it reads, here is the patience of the saints. If you don't know what the saints are, read Psalms chapter 50. To understand what the saints are. It's a nickname of Israel, right? And then it reads, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Christ. So you just can't have faith. You got to keep the commandments too as well. That's kind of, kind of, do you keep the commandments? Uh, ancestors, you mean bloodline? Yes, bloodline. There we go. <laughs> hey, you are right, 20K. Yes, your lineage, your family. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Literal, not spiritual. We are the sons and daughters, the children of the prophets. Noah, that was our ancestor. Abraham, that was our ancestor. Isaac, that was our ancestor. Joseph, that was our ancestor. Jacob, that was our ancestor. All of these biblical characters that you think come from Kansas and Scandinavia, they were black people. Black and brown, because you got some, some of them, like in the book of Hosea, they mix with the Assyrians. They mix with the Babylonians. They mix. Our people are scattered worldwide. Some of them mixed with Moab during the time of Judges. Some folks don't even know that. Ruth was a Moabitess, but she was a mixture when the children of Israel were enslaved by Moab for 100 years. A lot of folks don't know that. Khan, I was going to actually bring that out because another scoffer said he was, tell he was talking to you. He said, you're not a purebred uh, Hebrew, right? But then that would make none of us are because when Jacob had his sons, right? That started the Hebrew, like the Israelites, basically, right? None of the mothers were Hebrews. People make the most like simplistic statements and they don't go back to verify. It's always good when you make a statement to make sure you have a scripture to back up what you say. Because what are we doing? I'll, I'll put a one in the chat if we're reading the Bible. Somebody said, you guys need Yeshua. Are we reading the Bible? Yes or no? <laughs> this is why your ancestors are mad. Because the Gentiles, they speak from a Gentilic perspective. But we teach the Bible from an Afro-Hebraic perspective. And it makes them upset. It makes them uncomfortable. No, you're supposed to be a quiet, docile person. You're supposed to love everybody, brother. You're supposed to speak like Joel Oilsheen. Love everyone. Love everyone, brother. Let's be at peace with everyone, brother. You don't know your. He said, "You don't know Yahusha." Okay, let me let me read some that uh, Yahusha said, and let, let's see let's see if we believe uh, in this. Fell for that one. Already Revelation chapter going. two, verse twenty-five. You don't believe in Yahushua? Yahu I'm sorry, you was going to bring something out? I was saying, uh, where you about to go, I already know where you're going because he said that. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Revelation, meaning reveal, chapter 2, verse 26. It's in red, so these are the words of Christ. It says, and he that overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power, power, power over the nations. That's what Jesus said. That's what Yahushua said. That's what Yahweh said. That's what Yeshaya said. Power. Does it say power with the nations, brother? Or does it say power over the nations? 
power over the nations as the law hmm. states too in Deuteronomy 7 and 6 and 7. Facts. Verse 27. And he, the same folks that got power over the nations, shall rule them with a rod of iron, with a rod of iron, as the vessels of the potter shall they be broken the shivers, even as I received of my father. When Jesus come back, it's going to be a lot of people getting bust over the head with a rod of iron. Gordon Clark wants to come up. Gordon Clark wants to come up. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. What's your question or comment? What's going on, brothers? Doing well. Welcome, welcome. I, welcome. Um, I, I was at the beginning of it uh, earlier this morning, but then my neighbors needed some help, so I just left the live running and I went and helped them out. Uh, someone broke into their camper, so I helped them uh, patch it back up and stuff. But when I came back, I saw your live had a different picture on it. Yes, yes, yes. We, we were transitioning, going over different topics and stuff like that. We transitioned from talking about what happened. Did you want to make a comment as to the well, uh, image that you saw earlier? Actually, um, not really. I, I would rather move forward like how y'all do and uh, talk about the spirit and how uh, Jesus mm -hmm, said, mm -hmm. you know, he would give us power over nations. I'm thinking that in a sense, power over nations doesn't mean that he's going to fulfill your uh, property with guns and, and ammo and all this other stuff. I'm, I'm no. thinking more like, you know, when he says that, it means, you know, the nation's uh, rules won't have any say over you. Like, Think of it like this. I, I'll, I'll you. give you a perfect example of how to picture it, right? right? So in this society, all of us, we are subservient to the global elite, right? We're, yeah, we're, we're, we're on the same page as that, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, so all those that are wicked that are in power in the in the UN and the uh, uh, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the United States, uh, Europe, uh, Russia, China, all of these countries that are ruling right now, they serve the devil. Right. So now the kingdom of Christ can't sit next door to the kingdom of the devil. So now I'm going to read the scripture. Watch this. We're going to go to Psalm chapter 94, verse 16. I'm going to read this scripture and then I'm going to ask you a question. It says, Psalm chapter 94, verse 20. It says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frames mischief by a law. So now let's break this down. It says, shall the throne of iniquity. What is a throne? Um, that's someone who's uh, high on the on the rule list. That's beyond the rules of what mm -hmm. what uh, civilization is following. Right. Well, so, so this is somebody that's a king, correct? Yeah. Okay. So now a king means a kingdom. A kingdom means an empire. So it says, shall the throne or empire or kingdom of iniquity. Now, what does the word iniquity mean? Um, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, in what sense? There's okay, so, so I'll give you the answer. I'll give you the answer. Watch this. Let's right. go to, let's there, go I just to. Know there's more, more than one ways of answering that. What we answer positive. biblically, based okay. what we do is we pull terms and we answer it with the scripture because the Bible defines itself. Okay, so we'll, instead we'll of going to Google, sentence. I'm sorry to say, uh, interrupt, but we, you want me to read it again? Sure. Yeah. It's Psalms chapter 94, verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee which frames mischief by a law so you see the commenters yes they, they give you hey they give you abides, <laughs> my comments is all right by common sense and uh with with love and you know basically following the ten commandments right so the throne of iniquity means the throne of sin the kingdom of sin Okay, so yep. it, once again, it says, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? So now we know fellowship with thee means fellowship with God, a personal relationship with God. And I, shall I the have... throne of sin have fellowship with God, which frames mischief by a law. So now 
did the Catholic Church pass laws authorizing the Inquisition, authorizing the transatlantic oh, yeah, slave course. trade, course, authorizing I mean, they, the serfdom of, rough. that's why people had to fight for freedom in America because the churches were working with the state to oppress everybody. Oh yeah. But unfortunately, black and brown people got the, the, the very short end of the stick. I'm not saying that other people didn't get short ends, but they got the very shortest end of the stick. You with me? me brother, I, I'm dealing with the same kind of, uh, I think it's more of people who actually were in tune with the creator got the mm -hmm. short end of the stick because I'm having it hard right now. I even got people right. attacking me. I got, you know, friends that don't even really want to speak to me because mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to let them know. What, when they go to church, they're not actually learning. They're just there. You being go. Preached to. You see what I'm saying? You all right, brother? You all right? So what you're doing is you're trying to help people wake up from the delusionalism that they're under. Modern religion does not match up with the Bible, but those that that's why I always say on my podcast: either you get it or you don't. The people that get it, they're gonna get it. The people that don't get it, they're not gonna get it. Like there's no magic scripture. There's no, hey, come to my house and let's hang out. Let me teach you. They're not going to get it. But those that do get it, they're going to understand it. Both of the Jew and the non-Jew, both for the enslaved and the free. Everybody's going to get this verse. Well, Everybody's going to understand it. Now watch this. Listen close. It says, which frames mischief by a law. So now let's examine the United States of America, for example. What type of laws do you recall when you went to a uh, history class that you were taught that went against humanity, specifically black and brown people. Give me a couple of examples of different laws. Hmm. You talking about like biology and history or? Yeah, like just over the course of the United States, what kind of laws are you familiar with that were not in the best interest of all the citizens. Well, I know about the lies. I mean, I don't know about the laws, but I mean, from what's coming to my mind is, you know, we've been mm -hmm. told that uh, Christopher Columbus sold the ocean blue because the motherfucker couldn't tell brown from red. And no, 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 not that part. Not not about the age of discovery. Think well, about no, the no, question. But, but it's what I'm trying to get at. The is, law. You know, they're law, saying that we, law. we didn't enslave the uh, the Indians that we we had thanksgiving and we came together and we came to an agreement that we're going to share the land and, and that all that's fucking bullshit right 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 i agree with that statement that's a good statement but now specifically pertaining to the verse that we're reading here we're Can talking about laws passed in the country you want to say something go ahead go ahead uh, Con, uh something that might just jog his memory right so he's talking about if you were in history you learned about the laws of the united states right yeah so when you were in history, what did they teach you around 1960 to 1978? Oh, that um, the slaves were free, right? No, no, no. That's 1865. What, I thought you what said he's 19, saying is 1960. Yeah, 19. Yeah, right. We had these things called Jim. Oh, Jim okay, okay. Laws. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Right. You had to give me a second to. It's still early in the morning. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I'm just, just yeah. giving you a hit. Yeah, I'm gonna mute back up. I'm gonna let him finish. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah, I mean, go go ahead and uh, mm -hmm. help me with some knowledge, brother. I'm, that, yes. That's so, so the Bible. See, see, the key thing about the Bible for us to understand, we have to parallel the Bible to current times. A lot of times, people think that the Bible is some outdated book that is antiquated. When you can read certain things and relate it to history, then the Bible can come alive. Then you can see that it's a true book. That is, it, it it's sound. It transitions across the, the 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 time of humanity. It says, "Shall the this is Psalms chapter ninety four, verse twenty? Shall the throne of iniquity, meaning the kingdom of sin, have fellowship with thee, fellowship with God, which frames mischief by a law?" So, when you examine the powers of the earth, the global elite, the Catholic Church passed laws authorizing the serfdom in Europe authorizing expelling all of the afro hebraic people authorizing christopher columbus to come overseas to come and enslave the indigenous populations then when you examine america there were certain laws that were set in place to to uh denigrate and misalign 
the indigenous population that were called Indians, the Hispanic people that were first here, then they first from, from, from miraculously, now they're calling them illegal aliens when they were here first. I don't, I don't understand that part. And then black people were given the three fifths laws, the uh, Jim Crow laws, the pig laws, the, the, uh, the, uh, 13th amendment. That's a law, right? Cause check this out, bro. I, I want you to think about this. Uh, uh, Gordon, I'm listening. The 13th Amendment says, the 13th Amendment says, you are free from involuntary servitude and slavery, except, except if you're duly convicted of a crime. So is slavery over in America? No, I'm a slave myself. We're all peasants. So if you get put in prison, they can drag your ass out in, on, on the I-95, I-75, and make you work on the side of the road for free. That's just a deeper enslavement. And actually, no, there it's not you free. You, you, they tell you that, you know, you get, um, uh, you get credits and you get, uh, um, I guess, time served. Uh, Gordon got locked up before. Gordon know what the hell he talking about. <laughs> well, I mean, Gordon had prison, a couple of run-ins. <laughs> I've, read, I've read up on it. Oh, no problem, no problem. But but think about how egregious it is, right? I'll give you an example. In, in, a, in a city known as McDonough, Georgia, right? They have a law where if citizens can't have their grass higher than six inches and a police officer just so happens to pass by and tell them property. look well, your your property here you know the grass is too high unproper vegetation they charge people one thousand dollars oh yeah one check this out that's what i'm going through uh -huh. right now actually um i have okay go, talk about okay, it we had hurricane barrel come through right and i i we just went through a flood and then hurricane barrel comes through like a month later blows my stuff all over the place so i'm over there at my other property it's not livable and I'm trying to get all of my stuff and I bring it over here on a trailer and then I got to go and get stuff out of a storage unit because that got flooded and, and uh, messed up from hurricane barrel. So I'm trying to save my stuff and I bring it over here on my property and I have it stacked up in the yard. I don't mean to leave it like that. You know, I just, I have to work, you know, and I, I got kids to take care of. I got other priorities in line, you know, as long as my stuff isn't getting ruined, I'm, I'm happy. But uh, the property police come by for humble and they gave me two weeks to clean it up. So, I mean, I did the best I could. I put it up and they're like, no, we need your trailers off the property. We need, cause I have three trailers full of my stuff. Uh, and they also said that, um, uh, the cage for my dogs has to go. I have to keep them inside if I, if I want to keep my pets. And I mean, it, it's pretty messed up over here. And they just sent me a, a, a ticket and I have to go get it from the, uh, post office. But I, I can't wait to see what that says because I'm going to fight it because I did not commit any crime and I should not pay any. How crime. much is the citation? I think it's like 750. So that's what we so 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 you you just you just validated everything we just said right here out of the Bible. Everything we just shared okay. out of the Bible, Gordon, is validating what black and brown people have been trying to tell people in the United States for years. The system ain't right. What Bible the system is isn't just the uh, King James Version Bible, 1611, hey, the book of Psalms, chapter 96, verse 20. That's, all we that's do is we Bible read a verse and we make it easy to understand. That's all we do. You know what? You so know now what watch I this. Like, I, I don't like the fact that they took things out of the Bible that was in the Geneva Bible because the Geneva Bible came way long before. Um, a couple of years, 1560 and then 1611, eh, not too, not too far of a distance, but watch this, watch this. So we were mentioning about the, uh, revelation two verse 25, right? About the kingdom of heaven. I want to bring something out uh, to your attention, right? So right now in society, the global elite are running things and everybody else is on the bottom in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be reverse. The last is going to be first. And the first is going to be last. It's going to be Christ. The angels, the disciples, his people, and then the Gentiles. Okay, that's what's going to happen. All of these global elite, like your presidents, your prime ministers, Christ is going to use them to serve in the kingdom. To serve in the So those that were in the lowest conditions of society, they're going to be brought up top. 
And then those on the top of society are going to be brought on the p- bottom. And the most wicked out of them, they're just going to be thrown in the barbecue. You know what I mean when I say the barbecue, yeah. right? Like a fire, all of that stuff. So now watch this. Let's go to the book of Psalms, well, I, chapter 149. Terrible, hold though. on a second. I'm about to read the Bible. Hold on, hold on, hold all on. Right, right, Let me read this first. Psalms, chapter 149. We're going to read verse... Because everything we say, we back up with the Bible. Watch this. It says, let's start at verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and heart. So we sing unto the Lord. We praising him. We saying glory, hallelujah. Thank you, God, for doing all of this. Watch this. Let's jump down to verse Six, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance. What does the Bible say? To execute vengeance. What does the Bible say? To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So those that were the global elites that created all the wars and conflicts and turmoil on the planet, like you got uh, uh, U- Ukraine versus Russia, you got the Yiddish folks against the Arabs, you got World War One, World War Two, atomic uh, 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 armaments all over the planet. People still haven't figured out to this day that the reason why we have high cancer rates is not because of the food, it's not because of the water, it's not because of GMOs, it's because all of these rich countries we're doing nuclear testing, including the United States, including Spain, including France, including Russia, including China. And they got us in a trick bag thinking that all of these nations are against each other, when in reality, they're just fighting for resources and money while all of us are getting the business bad and the and God's people are getting it worse. Watch this. It says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Here it is. You got billions of dollars, trillions sent to John Hopkins University. They say, oh, send all of this money over here for cancer research. We can't figure out where cancer come from. They already knew it was the bombs. They already knew it was the bombs. They already know. Since the 1950s, then going up, cancer rates skyrocketed. Then people's three-year-olds and four-year-olds are suffering from cancer. You think they're going to get away with that? No. Watch this. It says, to bind their kings. What does the Bible say? To bind their kings with chains, with chains, with... Wait a minute. Hold on. Now, I know this is going to be uncomfortable when you hear it, but it's the God's the honest truth. George Washington was a slave master. Oh, yeah. I know. The people that we hold in high regard did not have the best interests of humanity at heart. Many of them were Freemasons. Many of them were Luciferians. Many of them were in Scottish Rite. Many of them were in secret societies. Many of the global elite didn't give a damn about nobody but themselves. They mistreated their own people and and they mistreated black and brown people worse so while so while your ancestors were able to get a couple of crumbs here and there right land grants and all of that stuff they were forcing my ancestors in chains right so the bible says watch this it says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings, that's your presidents, that's your uh, prime ministers, that's your dictators, your tyrants, that's your popes, that's your uh, imams in Islam, right? Because they had a part in the trade as well, right? That's your uh, that's your sultanates, right? That's your uh, people in China, right? The, the people in all of these nations, that, that serve in the global trade system, making money on the stock exchange. God says, God says their leaders are going to be bound in chains. Yep. And their nobles with fetters of iron. That's what the Bible means when it says rule over power over the nations. If you overcome, you'll have power over the nations. If you fit the prophecies, I got to I got to say it like that. <laughs> Watch this. Verse nine to execute upon them the judgment written this honor, honor, honor have all his saints praise ye the Lord. So Peter, Paul, 
Jesus Christ. They're all saints. They're praising the most high for this thing. Moses was a saint. Joseph was a saint. His people are the saints of God. We're praising the most high for this Bible verse right here. You know why? Because this is a new song that we never sung in church. In church, they tell you, right, to live in sin, to, to be in debauchery, to not change your life for the better, to not be a good father, to not be a good husband. They say, just live how you live. You're free in Jesus. Come as you are. But not this Bible. This Bible requires accountability. This Bible requires a change of heart. This, this Bible requires reality. Once we remove religion from the equation and we parallel history with prophecy, we call it history, the Bible calls it prophecy. There were groups of people placed in chains. God says the payment for that is to do the reverse. That's justice. So you, you, you're not gonna see anybody fighting for reparations. You're not going to see anybody begging for crumbs. You're not going to see anybody playing the victim. Nobody does that. We're asking God now for divine reparation, restitution, and to fix the problems of humanity. Clean up the GMOs. Clean up the bad air. Clean up the bad people. Start over from scratch. I actually have a Watch song this. that I wrote that, that does everything with the thing. Crazy. Yep. Though. That's right. That's right. Watch this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 66. Well, tell me what you think. Um, and mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be for Christians to like elevate them. They're on the uh, seven steps to heaven, but mm -hmm. you know, they got to get over that first step. Okay. They're, they're right there at Christianity. Now they need to mm -hmm. go six more steps up to get closer to God. But anyways, the way I see it is uh, mm -hmm. whenever you say, uh, you know, clean up the air and stuff. Well, uh, one of my verses in my song says, give me a different air to breathe and show everyone mm -hmm. a new light in this way. Okay, well, oh, praise I mean, What verse is that? You remember the verse? No, 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 no. That, that's my song. It's a verse to my song. Oh, you wrote a song. I thought you said Psalms, like the book of Psalms. Oh, no, my no, bad. <laughs> no. I'm just saying that I, I, I write songs for Christians to elevate from being Christian to being, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, a creationist. A, a, gotcha. a, a higher a higher um because christians are being taught wrong you're right and they, they need to follow uh -huh. the ten commandments and the best it's commandment much more than that it's much more than that gordon here's here's why the the ten commandments is the foundational piece of the constitution that was given to the israelites remember this was a group of captives that were held in egypt in bondage and God gave them a constitutional government built on laws and principles. The Ten Commandments was the foundation, and then you had statutes and commandments that helped them to do, to to enact how to be righteous, how to be holy. Okay. You see, modern religion fell off the bandwagon, literally, when they told you in modern religion that you didn't have to be obedient to God. When they say God laws are done away with, they basically threw out the baby with the bathwater, okay? Yeah. And there's much more than 613 laws. The, the whole entire Bible is a book of life. That's why it's called the book of life, how you live your life. Meaning what? What you eat, what you wear, yeah, well, how you conduct yourself, civil the, law. The truth, the light, and the way, right? right? Right, that's the way of life, correct. You all right, you all right, Gordon. Now watch hey. this. Watch I this. Have, Let's go to Isaiah. To your, uh, to the ten, Hold on a uh, second. Let me Amendment. read this verse. Hold okay, on a second. Good. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me. This is why I was talking about a new, new air, new land, new everything revitalized, right? For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me saith the lord so shall your seed and your name remain so god is speaking to verse 21 talks about the levites so this is going into the kingdom of heaven established through christ verse 23 because christ was a priest and a king verse 23 and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one sabbath to another shall all flesh Come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So what are the two holidays 
that God requires in the kingdom of heaven. We just read it. On, on, um, well, I'm, I'm still focused on what I was going to tell you on how I feel about the commandment of whenever he says, obey or uh, honor your neighbor. That is like one of the uh, commandments that we need most in this country, in this actual, uh, in, in this world. We, we need to learn how to obey that. And I think everything would be all right if we did. I mean, that's a powerful. Fo fo follow me. Follow me here. Follow me here. We just read something where it talks about a new heaven and a new earth, right? You want to be a part of the new heaven and the new earth? Well, of course. Who wouldn't? Of course. Good answer. So now the Bible gives a holiday known as the Sabbath and the new moon. Do you celebrate these holidays? Um, not willingly. All right, that means you need to start because when you read the rest of that verse, it, to it tells us that those Which that holidays? do not participate in it, the Sabbath and the new month. Oh, no, the yeah, Sabbath I, I, the new month. I, I worship him on Saturday and uh, I, I'm i uh, trying to figure out what month it is because there's supposed so the, to be the, 13 months in the Geneva Bible. So and March is the first month. Uh huh. That's when Passover comes in. Right. Yeah, and, my and phone so is one percent, y'all. I'm gonna have to end the live. My phone is one percent. I just realized it. Oh man, we're gonna, we're gonna restart the live. We're gonna restart the live. Shalom. Right.